The Gift by Lee Young Lee To pull the metal splinter from my palm, my father recited a story in a low voice. I watched his lovely face and not the blade. Before the story ended, he'd removed the iron silver I thought I'd die from. I can't remember the tale, but hear his voice still. A well of dark water, a prayer. And I recall his hands, two measures of tenderness he laid against my face, the flames of discipline he raised above my head. Had you entered that afternoon, you would have thought you saw a man planting something in a boy's palm, a silver tear, a tiny flame. Had you followed that boy, you would have arrived here, where I bend over my wife's right hand. Look how I shave her thumbnail down so carefully she feels no pain. Watch as I lift the splinter out. I was seven when my father took my hand like this. And I did not hold that shard between my fingers and think, metal that will bury me, christen it little assassin, or going deep from my heart. And I did not lift up my wound and cry, death visited here. I did what a child does when he's given something to keep. I kissed my father. The Gift was written by the poet Li Yang Li. Li Yang Li was born in Jakarta, Indonesia in 1957. He was born to Chinese political exiles. His family, however, was very influential originally in China. His grandfather was the first president of the Republic of China, and his father was the personal physician to Mao Zedong. However, when he came to Indonesia, he helped found the Gamaliel University but he became a political prisoner after a rise in Indonesian anti-Chinese sentiment. During this time, his family fled to the U.S. in 1964 and originally settled in Seattle, but moved later to Vandergriff, Pennsylvania. After the move to Vandergriff, Pennsylvania, Lee Young Lee's father became a Presbyterian minister and read frequently to Lee, thus becoming one of his writing influences. Lee began to take writing seriously at the collegiate level at the University of Pittsburgh. Among him, Gerald Stern also attended school here. He quotes with regard to Lee's work, What characterizes his poetry is a certain humility, a willingness to let the sublime enter his field of concentration and take over, a devotion to language, a belief in its holiness. Lee also attended the University of Arizona and the State University of New York at Brockport. He taught at several universities as well, including Northwestern and the University of Iowa. The type of poetry that had a huge impact on Li Young Lee's poetry was ancient Chinese poetry. Two of these poets, including Li Bo and Tu Fu. His poems often take a narrative form and he's considered a lyric poet. His poetry also reflects on many of his personal experiences and he uses them to ponder the future. Another great influence on Li Young Li's poetry is that he believes in a god. He says, if you rigorously dissect it, you realize that everything is a shape of the totality of causes. What's another name for the totality of causes? the cosmos. So everything is a shape of cosmos or God. It feels like something bigger than me that I can't possibly fathom, but am embedded in. Because of Li Young Li's belief in a higher power, he believes that poetry is descendant of God. He believes that a higher power has created everything in the world around him. And even if poetry has little flaws or things that make it not perfect, that is what gives each poem its beauty and individuality. Three of Lee Young Lee's most successful poetry collections include Rose, The Winged Seed of Remembrance, and Book of My Nights. Rose was published in 1986 and is a collection of poems that won the Delmore Schwartz Memorial Poetry Award from NYU. The gift is included in this collection. In The Winged Seed of Remembrance, which was published in 1995, Lee reflects on his family's travels from Indonesia to Pennsylvania in a memoir praised for its thought-provoking narrative and lyric language. 
Lee's third poetry collection, Book of My Nights, was published in 2001 and deals less with family and what others have done for him, and more with finding himself, for a transfiguring kind of introspection, according to M. L. Schultz in the Rain Taxi Review of Books. His poems are a recipient of many awards, but most importantly, he has received a fellowship from the Academy of American Poets. He now lives in Chicago, Illinois with his wife and two sons. The main theme of Lee Young Lee's The Gift is to show the complex relationship between the father and the son, but also to highlight how valuable and unbreakable that bond truly is. Death is also a theme in the poem, but is overshadowed by the hope and care that the tenderness of the father brings the child. Lee Young Lee conveys this theme very effectively throughout the entire poem, especially by using the literary devices of point of view and structure. The point of view comes from a son speaking in a flashback of his father. However, it shifts to the future in the second part of the poem, and then in the third part of the poem, then again flashes back to the original story involving his father. By the end of the first section of the poem, you can already tell that the gift is not what it looks like at first glance in the title. The gift is an extended metaphor for the discipline to show kindness, healing, and tenderness that the father shows the son. The first section of the poem is the flashback of the son thinking about the time when his father pulled a metal splinter from his palm. He recalls his father reciting a story in a low voice and watches his lovely face and not the blade. This is important because it shows his attitude towards the splinter. He focuses on the hope and not the pain that the splinter brings him, which is why he talks about watching his father's lovely face and not the blade. Then the second stanza begins by hitting you with some imagery. I can't remember the tale, but hear his voice still, a well of dark water, a prayer. This is a metaphor for healing, and it shows a hopeful temperament. This is then followed by another metaphor involving his father's hands, two measures of tenderness he laid against my face. This shows the two hands of the boy's father, but could also symbolize two hands of the father or a higher power, because there are many references in biblical texts to the healing power of God's hands which raise the flames of discipline above the boy's head and show that if he follows his instructions, the boy can also heal, like his father does. Then in the second section of the poem, we transition from the father planting a silver tear, a tiny flame of discipline into the boy's hand to the future, where the son begins to heal his wife. He uses the gifts and tools that he has received from his father to physically and spiritually heal his wife in the future. This concept is known as spiritual holism. Then in the third section of the poem, our last two stanzas, we shift back to the flashback of the boy and his father, but this time there is more of an appreciative tone for all the gifts that his father has given him. The boy sentimentally reflects on the day when his father took his hand like this. Then something very interesting happens. During the reflection of the boy, he italicizes two lines, metal that will bury me and death visited here. These two lines are thought to have personified death. It contrasts the innocence and hope that is shown throughout the entire poem and shows that this splinter could have been fatal. It could have caused tetanus, but Fortunately, his father was looking out for him, and the boy has complete trust in his father, which is why he did not lift up his wound and cry, death visited here. Instead, he shows an unbreakable belief in and appreciation for his father, especially in the last three lines, as we shift back to that tone of innocence and appreciation where he says, I did what a child does when he's given something to keep. I kissed my father. This shows innocence because it's a child's first impulse to kiss his father. This concluding line brings us back to the original, complex, but extremely valuable relationship between the father and son. It brings full circle the healing that the father has done, and thus the healing that the son can now implement. 
Clearly, according to Alex Lemon in the Minneapolis Star Tribune, Lee Young Lee's poetry's near mysticism, which is nonetheless fully engaged in life and memory while building and shaping the self from words, along with his use of literary devices, such as point of view and his poetry structure, convey the meaningful relationship between the father and son. However, I too can relate to Lee Young Lee's poetry. Even though I'm not a boy, I too have had a great relationship with my father and I have learned countless things from him. I will take each and one of those gifts that he's given me as I move on independently into my university career and really for the rest of my life. I'm so thankful for everything that he has taught me and I hope to use it to the best of my ability. My relationship with my father and the father has made me spiritually whole.